Welcome to The War Room, a weekly roundtable discussion that takes place every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Tune in at 911warroom.com slash Zoom. All right, it's 5.06. It's a little late. It's June 18th, 2022, 9-11 War Room Pentagon Discussions. I thank everyone for being here. Uh, again, we're here just to keep it civil. Please keep it civil. I don't, you know, I'll say it, you'll hear it a million times. Attack the evidence vehemently, but not other people. So as long as you're not talking about other people, go at it, you know. All right. So that being said, I guess Lorraine was going to join us as well. Hopefully. She would try. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we and, have a... uh, we don't have anybody from the uh, the crew of um Adam and company. Um, None of the rude boys, Fran Shore, David. I guess they're still out and out of. They're out in the wild. Yeah, they're camping. Did they? <laughs> let's see. Messenger, did they respond to anything? Let's take a look here real quick. Uh, David, Fran. They didn't even see it, so no, they're okay. not in civilization yet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's crazy. Somebody goes camping and they're gone for what three months? it was yeah so uh jerry nice to meet you i haven't met you before could uh i'm from pittsburgh uh, hey i'm from uh, eugene here no oh, right on pacific uh do you which side of the camp are you coming down or do you not hold a value uh an opinion well i guess or? i'm on the uh north flight path camp okay a camp yep i guess <laughs> one of the we have what are they different theories and then we have like amalgamations of different theories and then i don't know what we have we have uh but we're all the 9-11 truth movement we all want truth for justice we all uh want to see uh justice served for the victims family members and uh find out what happened because this is like the greatest attack on american soil and nobody wants to talk about it it's the craziest thing ever um it's amazing. So who would like to lead off with something? Were you guys discuss having a discussion before we started? Do you want to continue? Gene, I'm kind of new to this, so are your Pentagon? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I just want to, okay, if I could just start with this. Um, there's a lot of discussions that I can't follow because I'm not as well versed in all the evidence and even the geography of things, you know, when people refer to the Navy Annex and the bridge and the, you know, the, yeah, whatever parts of the Pentagon, east, west, north, south, like I'm, I'm, I can't always follow what everybody's saying. And a lot of people talk about things like everybody's in the loop about everything. So sometimes you have to explain things like, like, like I'm a five-year-old and I only understood yesterday, for example, this is a typical case where I think on the last call, there was a lot of back and forth about um, the police officer Lagasse. What's his first name? William. William Lagasse, right. And I, all I knew from that was that both camps were throwing stuff at each other about, yeah, well, you say that he's, uh, you know, he's a, a great witness for the North Path and the other, and then the, the counter shot was, yeah, but then you don't buy the fact that uh, he's also a witness for a plane hitting the Pentagon. And I didn't understand at all how both things could be possible. And even just yesterday, basically, after watching a couple of clips and speaking to Lorraine and everything, I put it together that in the CIT interviews, Lagasse was adamant about the North Path. And that he, the way he described it, there was no doubt in his mind that this is where the plane had come from and, um, you know, where he had seen it fly. <clears throat> and then in an email exchange, basically, he said that he, uh, that the plane, he basically stated that the plane, you know, hit, hit the building. Not that he saw the plane hit the building, but that the plane hit the building and that it hit the light poles, which was inconsistent with the path that he was describing. So here you have a case where both sides are using the same witness to make their points. And I finally understood 
where the inconsistency was, like how, how this one person <laughs> was being held up to make an argument for both sides. And, you know, it's something so simple, but nobody had ever bothered to explain it in so many words. And these are the things that I'd like to clarify on Pentagon call discussions when we talk about the evidence, just state plainly what it is, what's being said, what the objection is, why it's a problem. Um, not just attack, yeah, you said he was on the bridge. Okay, so what does that mean he was on the bridge? What does it mean? The whole Lloyd England thing, I still don't understand it. I, it's completely beyond me. Nobody's been able to really break it down for me. So if anybody wants to do that, I'd love to hear it. And um, yeah, so it's just, that's what we have to flush out, all the points of evidence. Both sides will say that there's witnesses. You know, Lorraine has a list of, an unbelievably accurate list of witnesses. She has an image, a map, exactly where they stood, what they saw. Um, and if you listen to Ed and Adam and Darren, they'll tell you that there's witnesses that saw a plane hit the building or that it went on the South Pass. So obviously these two things cannot coexist. Something is, something's not right with it. And this is what I'd really like to see kind of broken down about what's possible and what's not. So that's Thank my you. So, Miles, you've got something to you got something to say. Yeah. Um, what I why the reason I'm here, I had to give it some thought because I'm in Canada, like Sandra. Um, I'm not a lawyer, but I do find so what I'm learning from Lawyers Committee for 9/11 Truth really fast, or pardon me, 9-11, Lawyers Committee for 9-11 Inquiry, important to be correct. What I learned from them is certain things that I didn't realize were points of law. And one of them is that you're required to have standing in order to, to take a case to court in the United States, and I imagine it's the same in Canada. And, and so I'm wondering, well, I don't really have standing because I'm a Canadian and you're talking about an attack on the Pentagon. So what business do I have participating in this? However, as I gave it thought and I connect it with other things I've learned, I thought, well, I do have some standing to participate or at least show up and share this view. And the reason I think I have some standing is there's five criteria for a membership in NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And I've just put a video link to a short Canadian Broadcasting Corporation news item, an interview of retired General John, uh, pardon me, Joseph Ralston, former NATO Supreme Commander. And in it, he uh, shares what are the five criteria for membership in NATO. And so I just uh, to summarize, I back it up, or why am I here? Well, I'm also a nation or a citizen of a nation that is in NATO. And one of the questions that I think before we even, you know, like to, to parse what flight path this aircraft struck the Pentagon at, I'm sure is important. But there's even sort of a bigger, some bigger questions for us to be aware of. And that's where this news item comes into play. I think it's only about five minutes. And if you'd play it, I would talk some more to it. But again, you know, it's up to you if you want to put it into the agenda. Um. Well, it depends how relevant it is, because yeah. I mean, we're really just here to discuss. I mean, this I has nothing to do with any standing or legal aspects or nationalities. This is just really about the mystery that is the Pentagon and trying to understand what makes sense about it, um, what may have happened, what definitely didn't happen and why not. 
And so it doesn't matter where you're from. You're just- Well, you know, the problem is that there, there are these roadblocks that get put up against the people searching for 9-11 inquiry. And so, you know, I just like connect, making all the connections, but why do I think it's important? for, for uh, even me to drop in and make a contribution here. And it's because um, these five criteria, and one of the questions that former Minister of Defense, Paul Hellyer uh, is on video saying, and so he was the former Canadian Defense Minister Back in the 60s, mind you, but when he when he made this statement, he was the uh, oldest, the eldest member of the Queen's Privy Council. And what that means is he's recognized as being one of the highest level of council okay, Miles, in Canada. I summarize it because okay. we're so, so off track so right he, now. He said, I don't think you are. You know, yeah, so, we're, we're uh, talking about the Pentagon, my friend. Yeah, so what, uh, what I'll say is he asked, well, where were the interceptors? Okay. So in other words, that's a question that precedes all of the nitty gritty details. And uh, where are the interceptors? Because yes, um, this, this could have been what they call a, a, is a decapitating strike on, on the capital of the USA. So anyway, I'm um, just, in summary, just saying that this bigger question also looms over everything, you know, like where were the interceptors? Yeah, definitely. That, that, that's a huge thing. And where were the interceptors for any of the planes, really? I mean, uh, not just the Pentagon. Yeah. Joe, you have a question to that or you got something else? Yeah, let me just add, when it comes to being involved, and needing evidence and you know to claim a case um we all have a duty as citizens at least for the united states to figure out what really happened because if i was to present evidence i would like the evidence that's being withheld by the fbi or cia or whatever and we just can't get that evidence <clears throat> the exact evidence that's causing us to sit here and talk about the Pentagon right now. They hold it in their hands. We don't have that. So we have to figure it out. And that caused us to go to war. I mean, endless war. Longest wars in our history, actually, where my children can be end up um, drafted into these wars as they grow bigger. So we have we have a duty to be involved whether we have evidence or not and to figure it out especially when evidence is being withheld by our own government and canada as well we're hey, all I'll, involved uh, the world is Cal, involved. Just, uh, I, I, and and that's where you know if we don't play the video i do encourage everybody to <clears> listen <throat> to it because to what you're saying this former NATO Supreme Allied Commander says five criteria for NATO, NATO membership. One, you have to be a functioning democracy. Well, what right. kind of democracies are we living in if you can't get the I'm, information? I'm just, I'm just, Miles, I'm just talking about us being involved, just like you're involved. Why we're all here and we have a right to be involved. Exactly. Yeah. You have to, you're supposed to be a functioning you, you democracy. By the these guys don't play by their own rules, man. Exactly. If they play by their own rules, we wouldn't be here right now. Mm -hmm. And the number three point that this Supreme Commander of NATO says is a criteria for NATO Let me pause you real membership. quick there, Miles, if I may. Uh, real Just quick, finish guys. on this one last point. Civilian well, control of your military. It's 520. Civilian control of your military. Thank you. So it's five, it's 520. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we'll come back to you uh, for the last point. So, Jerry, Mike, this might be a little odd if you're not religious, but every day at 520, I just say a little prayer, a good vibe around the world. Uh, it's a thing we've been doing for over a year now. So it's that time. Hopefully everybody just takes a minute, several seconds, just uh, in one, wish good things. And uh, I'm a Christian, so I just say a little prayer. So just break with me for a second, guys. If you're not religious, just chill out. 
But uh, Lord, we just lift this up to you. We look for justice for 9-11 crimes. We ask that you would continue to uh, work in our hearts and minds so that we could pass this truth on to other people, that they would hear us. Uh, Lord, that we could get justice for these victims, family members, and ourselves and everyone in the world for these great crimes that happened. Uh, we just ask for your blessings in your name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, amen you know, to that. So, thank you. And your last point, I'm sorry, number three was? And it's required that you have civilian control of your military. So the question is, well, yeah, we're civilians. And uh, obviously, there's some civilians that are in control of this evidence that, uh, you know, we need to, you know, uh, uh, confront and question. So anyway, I just think it's a powerful statement to be aware of. Thank you. Hey, just throw the video into the, uh, the link screen, into the link, the comment box. I think he did already. Very good. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah, it's in chat. Mm -hmm. Miles. Nine minutes. Are we watching that? Hello? Yeah, I you yeah, you you, you could parse it down, but anyway, um yeah, you probably don't wanna if you if you go to part way through, I think it's in there, but anyway, for maybe another time. Yeah. Uh, anybody who's interested can can save it and watch it. I just, you know, we're almost 25 minutes in and I just really want to address really the points of uh, of the actual events that happened that day. Uh, Kale, do you still still have your hand up because you wanted to say something or? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. It's not your fault. So none um, of the big players are here. To, well, I guess there are. Adam Eisenberg is here. <laughs> in my mind and you guys will just have to this is this is how it is for me and i'll just shoot from the hip there's certain thank big... you for saying that i am not a big player as far as the pentagon story goes yeah you're one of the big players in my yeah. book so thank you uh, david chandler has become through wayne costy uh, here's how i'll just break it down since adam's the only big player that i consider big players so forgive me this is my asinine commentary i don't know <laughs> um this is my commentary uh so we have Wayne Costi came up with this brilliant uh, rebuttal or whatnot, uh, assertion synthesis of uh, what happened to the Pentagon, but he is not a, a good presenter. So David Chandler basically got all his data and refined it and presented it in a way that he believes scientifically can be shown that a large aircraft did hit. We have Craig McKee, he would silently from Kelly David, he would get support from Kelly David and Andy Steele uh, for a large 757 did not hit the Pentagon. Um, but they would never say that publicly, I don't think anymore. Uh, but you have Craig McKee saying the flyover theory. Barbara Honegger basically says a plane blew up right before it hit the Pentagon. And then a helicopter is involved in there somehow. <laughs> it's, it's an amalgamation of some ideas. Um, you've got. That's Terry Maison, who has the missile theory. The missile launched out of the Atlantic Ocean, and a Russian colonel or whatever is witness to this. He retired, and no one's heard from him again. Uh, what other? Um... Have you guys ever had Ken Jenkins on? Uh, I talked to Ken. He's very passionate about the Pentagon as well. And he would say that it what did hit the Pentagon, he'd be in the mm -hmm. David Chandler group. Right. I, I think that maybe today, what, I, what might be an interesting exercise today, and not everybody has necessarily an opinion on what happened that day. I know that you, Gene, specifically try to stay away from even. Uh, I'm with Richard. Any... We take no position. Yeah, you take no position. And you get hate, um, hated for but, that. But... 
but for anybody who has a position and maybe even those who don't, I think I would very much like to hear one statement from everyone on this call that you feel is an important statement to make about the Pentagon, either mm -hmm. about your stand on it, uh, what you think is the most critical thing, just the most critical point you can make. Um, I, I, whether it's technical evidence, whether it's theoretical, whether it's from a conceptual standpoint, uh, regardless, I leave it up to each and every one of you. But the one thing, you're all here on this call, it's a Pentagon call, obviously you have something to say about it. So I would very much like to hear if there had to be one quote coming from you in a book written about the Pentagon, what is it that you would want to be heard from you? I'll go first real quick, then we'll go to Adam. Uh, mine would be this quote from Fran in between a discussion between her and Craig McKee, where everyone likes to throw around the phrase, uh, well, you believe the official story. You believe the official story if you support that it hit the, the Pentagon. She says here, the members of our movement who after meticulous study believe that a large airline, airliner created the observable damage at the Pentagon certainly do not believe the official story. Just as we who believe large airliners hit the Twin Towers do not believe the official story. To say otherwise is a misunderstanding, or was, is a misunderstanding their message at best. To say otherwise is misunderstanding their message at best. Well said, Fran Shore, not by me. <laughs> uh, Adam, to you. Do you want to remove the screen share, Gene? Getting there. Okay. You are muted, my brother. Oh, great. Thank you. So um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Adam Eisenberg. I spent 240 hours on site between September 11th to the 30th. I'm also likely the only person on site that has any experience mm -hmm. with airplane parts. I spent... Uh, several months working as a high-level senior kind of official in a uh, Pratt & Whitney facility, their number one park storage facility. So I typically overlay those two experiences. Um, my efforts into investigating this subject um, kind of grant me a, a little bit of a key that researchers don't have, um, being a person that spent extensive time on site um, so I can knock on some doors that most researchers get ignored. And if people don't talk to me, it can be considered a little weird. And in my efforts to get answers, um, I have basically uncovered a, um, an element um, that was on site that had no authority to be there, that had um, the ability, the technical abilities and the capabilities and the know-how um, from a military black ops slash CIA perspective um, I have been investigating these people. These people are well aware that I am investigating them. I can say publicly that, um, um, you know, I, 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 these efforts have been going on for over a year now. Um, so my efforts hopefully will um, come up with something that can be used in a court of law. Um, I do admire the uh, people that are out there um, that are trying to make 9-11 progress there. Ultimately, I think that... Um, What's most valuable though is the truth and ultimately the truth is going to shine bright. But um, I'm just gonna say it clearly, there were people that had no authority to be on site um, doing things there, saying things there. And um, when, you, when you mash these, these stories up um, over a number of public appearances, in addition to um, some things that I have got people to say publicly in anger, um, it doesn't add up. And so I can just say that a lot of these online discussion panels ultimately go to the witnesses. And I will now say that there are efforts being made to show that there is extreme levels of government corruption that tie in not only potentially FEMA, uh, local firefighting agencies, um, the renovation project, the Secret Service, um, all of this and others. I have names and uh, these names are saying things that are very nefarious. Um, and ultimately, these names lead to intelligence, intelligence networks that are wide. And so I've been investigating all this. Um, my efforts are still ongoing. There are people that have been in the war room in the past that are helping me. Um, this is stuff that I'm going through very slowly. 
But in my um, efforts to investigate, I'm also conducting research in areas that I um, haven't been able to uh, find answers in. So I think there's new research that can be looked into, specifically uh, the United States Army, the Old Guard, um, of which I was a member of. There's about 300 people on site. I'm trying to get witness statements from each and every single one of them um, concerning their efforts. And all of them can say the same thing. They spent about 240 hours on site. So they're going to say a lot of interesting things, but um, ultimately, I believe that there was some type of a thermobaric weapon inserted on site. Um, there is ways of filing FOIA requests in specific areas um, that I was at um, that will ultimately really um, make it very interesting to seem that if there was an actual trajectory of damage, why were bodies winding up where they were? in the manner in which they were being found. Just a lot of things didn't make any sense. So um, I can just assure you that there's a lot of research going into it and I wanna thank the people that are assisting me with that. Um, and I also wanna say that very soon, I'm gonna be talking publicly about some people um, in the 9-11 truth movement. And um, that's all I wanna say about that. So that's all I gotta say. What's, oh what's a thermobaric weapon? Yeah, I was just um, looking it up. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a it's a weapon, and, and it, it basically it was used, to my understanding, militarily in a lot of cave situations, where the way the the, the bomb exploded, um, it, it would kill people in cave systems that were were down underground without having to actually go down into these caves and to interject with them. But um, yeah, it's just the way that the bodies were being found. Um, Somebody that knows weapon systems very well recommended that I study these things. Um, and, and there's a lot of really interesting patterns that I'm finding. Um, and, and, and these patterns are also kind of lining up with um, what first responders on site were saying. So there's, there's like I said, there's a lot of different elements and, and there's a lot of different ways that I can kind of um, look into this situation just because I, I spent a lot of time on site there. And so I can... I can kind of come up with um, ways of um, demanding information from the government um, that go outside of the parameters of what they have offered. Um, and ultimately my goal is to, to show that uh, they're just withholding extreme amounts of information. And so my efforts, I'm formally calling them the Orion Project, are basically doing a full scale um, alpha to omega breakdown um, with extreme detail into everything from the geopolitics leading up to the crime scene to the entire crime scene itself, each and every witness. And ultimately, I'm going to pressure the witnesses that say they saw a plane actually hit the building. Um, and if people say, well, you, you're dragging these poor people into this event, how could you? Ultimately, I go back to the people that I have on site saying the terrible things that I have them on record saying, and there's hours upon hours of it. Um, and, and so, you know, I hate to say it, that's, that's my thing. I can prove that there were um, nefarious efforts being made um, by government employees on, Oop. on site. Employees. I, I'm afraid to say that publicly. So, Wait, you broke up there. You were afraid to say something about employees. No, and I, I said, I can, I can prove with with extreme clarity um, through hours of, of testimony that there were government employees on site that were nefariously entered into that position. Um, and, and, and they're saying things that are just so off track and they're, they're disinforming and, and just extreme levels. Um, and this one individual specifically, he, he to my understanding, um, he even considered himself, a, he, he publicly went on record saying, you know, that he was doing spooky things for the government. So he was a total spook. Um, his own family members were under the Trump administration about to be promoted to the highest levels of the CIA. Um, so I don't know where these, these connections, how deep and how far they go, but um, this guy, um, to, to one person's knowledge, um, there was only one individual that even knew who this person was that I'm speaking of, and that was Ken Jenkins. Ken Jenkins in a conversation and several with me actually has said that this man was on site and he was uh, basically there just showed up as one of those one of those rogue do-gooder kind of people. Um, James Schwartz, the incident commander himself, basically said that there were 24 
elements on site, different various firefighting elements, and that some showed up um, unannounced. Um, and, and basically, my investigation is into those people and those elements that were on site. Um, but I, I can also say publicly now that um, if you go and listen to Adam Fitzgerald, he's my biggest critic. Um, if you go and listen to his podcast um, with James Schwartz, he talks about these elements. And so I've got these elements kind of mincing words now with James Schwartz. Um, so I'm about to leverage James Schwartz, the incident commander, and this guy against one another. Um, random fact, James Schwartz's wife was a very high-ranking member in the CIA as well, um, which I'm not even going to speculate into that. But I can just say, like I said, there, there's a lot of things that don't add up. And, um, and, and Ken Jenkins thought this hey, man was just an individual on site. Um, but this guy actually on record um, states that he had his firefighters there. Um, and to my understanding, he was a part of a West Coast agency and even his own government agency had no idea that he was on site. Um, that picture that you just had um, as well, back before that, that run right there, that guy to the left is General James Jackson. Um, I'm investigating him as well. He was the military district of Washington's uh, commander. Um, he, you know, set out an order. It was to my understanding, he ordered people from my unit to guard Fort McNair. I was a part of that, um, that order. Um, and I wasn't given um, live rounds. They, they basically handed me an empty magazine. Um, so when I asked the arms room specialist, hey, you know, why are you giving me an empty magazine? to guard a base when I can see smoke from the Pentagon right over the Anacostia River. Well, he said, well, you haven't been authorized to get live rounds. That's just a random story. So I'm investigating him as well. I'm trying to get answers there. But um, Ken Jenkins, going back to the guy I'm investigating, who's this guy's name is Lee Wheelbarger. Um, Ken Jenkins thought that he was basically put on site. He came on site as a, as a lone wolf. Um, and that is absolutely not the case. Um, I've, Asked Ken Jenkins numerous times um, if he could give me details on the interaction that he had with Lee Wheelberger. Um, he's indicated that he's had notes um, on the man, um, so I'm, I'm working with him. I've been trying to get those, those notes for quite some time, um, so I'm going to be writing him again about that. But, yep, long story short, there he is. That's the, uh, that's the man who is uh, publicly threatening me and basically um, doing everything he can to smear me. Um, that is the star element of my investigation. Um, he says, and uh, a lot of things that just aren't true. Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, yep. Hmm. Right on. All right. So, so coming back to my question to everybody, but now to you, what would be your, so you're, ba you're basically saying no plane hit the Pentagon. I, well, I, I, I I, I do not or remember are you it. Not? Okay. I, just okay. the damage. The damage wasn't even close to something that I would say had anything to do with a plane, especially a large commercial airline hitting there. Um, I, I would say that if there were elements of the plane that flew, the pick, if there was an actual plane, um, you know, you could break down the the argument from a number of different ways. And of course, we all know the way that that. I don't even want to get into that, but there there's just a lot of things that. I think a lot of witnesses that could have been put out there. Um, you know, if you look at the way that the FBI was collecting parts between Shanksville and the Pentagon, it was totally different. Um, and, and I can tell you, I, I did not see anything in my 240 hours on site that looked at all like there was any type of, of plane debris. Um, I didn't see any people that looked like they died on a plane. And I can tell you, based on the ways that I've shook Lee Wheelbarger publicly, um, that the, the specific area on the um, on the map um, where where it was a highly protected area where you had to have special access to get on site. So, like I said, I, I've got several hours um, of of this guy Lee Wheelbarger saying things that are so just terribly, you know. Um, wrong and, and, and just nefarious. He's basically changed his, he, he, he has a, a thing called KLW News. He's basically now um, got a paid news source. So he's 
now disinforming the masses. And if you look into his subscribership, I mean, he's got 50,000 people following him and his viewership is in the multi-millions. Um, but he, he, he was on site. He is a technical weapons specialist. Um, and and I, I, I believe that he ultimately set off what seemed to be, a, a, like I said, a thermobaric weapon. Um, and, and those, I believe, even in, have some type of a gasoline element. So jet fuel, gasoline, I mean, it's, there were people that were allegedly burned by jet fuel. Um, but when you, when you really, when it boils down to it, you know, I'm using my, my status as a first responder there and the investigation that I have, I'm eventually going to apply very legal, um, I'm not going to break any rules, I'm not going to threaten anybody, but very heavy levels of pressure to the people that said that they saw an actual commercial airliner hit the building because I quite frankly don't believe them. And that's where I think everybody, the, the arguments always go to the witnesses. And if anybody wants to get pissed off at me, I just say, look, you know, find somebody that has the level of experience with airplane parts that I have and the time spent on site that I spent. Um, and, and even people in my unit, um, they're gonna say a number of things. Uh, most people fall into the category that they don't remember seeing any plane parts. And the funny thing is that the people that think they saw plane parts are saying they saw things that there's no record of. Well, then, if anybody wants to, you know, challenge that, you can't find any record of anything anywhere. And I can tell you from my own experience that every single part on a plane has a serial number etched into it. Um, I can just tell you that. And, and so... You know, that's where I'm going to try and file FOIA requests. And ultimately, the government's not going to give us anything. And, and that's where I'm going to go back to, you know, my quest of just showing the public, hey, look, even with my levels of access, you know, I am not getting answers. Um, so that's and then ultimately, I have my own personal anomalies that I've experienced with 9-11. I, I discussed one of them with not getting a, any ammunition on guard duty. But there's so many others that I'm working on right now. And um, so, yeah, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things that are coming forward. And, and I would also like to say that Lorraine is doing some great work. Um, if, if you guys really want to see how good she is with the witnesses, there's some really good discussions on uh, the Facebook group that I think Jean is a speaking of that. She's actually just joined us. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. So. So, yeah, she's. Um, it's great to have her here, but uh, I think ultimately the witnesses, you know, I'm going to be applying a pressure to the ones that say they saw a plane hit. And I think if they react the same way that Lee Wheelbarger is reacting and has been reacting um, to me, um, they're going to, they're going to fold and they're going to, they're going to run. So Adam, can I just ask you a technical question again, coming back to the thermobaric weapons? Sure. How how would that be deployed? Is that something that has to be shot? Is it something that could be planted? Is it how how does it even work? Well, I, to my understanding, it could be it could be both. Um, and, and here's where it gets interesting. You know, some people, and I, I'm not I'm not leaning on anybody's work, but some people have talked about drones. Well, Lee Wheelbarger was a drone specialist. Um, weapon systems as well, explosives, electronics, all that stuff. And I can tell you, a lot of people um, say that they they didn't smell uh, jet fuel, but they smelled. Uh, I, I forget what it was. Yep, that's Fortnite. it. Yeah. yeah, to me, it, it smelled like an electrical fire. Um, there was that overwhelming electrical burning sensation. But um, hmm. yeah, so, what know, does cordite smell like? We all got to have. <laughs> yeah, but, but some people were were burned with um, with with gasoline. I don't know, and that's the thing. This is where ultimately I don't believe anybody. And if and it, it boils down to the fact that one of the guys in a leadership position, you know, is saying all this crazy stuff. And and when there there was a command structure, um, I, I don't have it unfortunately in front of me, but on my it's on my other computer. But the gentleman that I'm investigating says that he was the head of logistics. And the incident commander is saying that he had no business on site and he was removed by the FBI at the incident commander's request through his assistant. And then so I've got now this guy who says he was allegedly the head of logistics and spent more time on site than anybody saying that the FBI was wrong and he came back and, and that they were misinformed. And, and so it's this, you know, it's this great just 
whirlwind of things that aren't adding up. Um, so, you know, I don't know, but thermobaric weapons, if anybody knows any, anybody um, that has any type of experience with weapons, missiles, explosive, things like that, um, let me know. And there's also uh, three or four days after the incident, James Schwartz did a talk where he was talking about the collapsed portion of the building having an extremely hot, um, still extremely like hot sensation. Like it was, it was unlike he, anything he'd ever seen. He almost kind of looked dumbfounded in the interview. Um, so, you know, I, I would love for the, the scientists to discuss that. I don't think they have, um, but, you know, it seems to me that such a small area and even the pictures don't capture just how small it was. There were several people in my unit that were even making the claim. They're like, that doesn't look anything like an airplane hit it. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I've been saying the things that I've been saying for a long time. The only reason I didn't really publicly go forward with it is because every time I talk to people outside of my friends and family circle, they looked at me like I was nuts. But now that the jabs are going on and we can all kind of see the, the overarching tyranny, the world's waking up. So I'm finding that people are very receptive to this information now. So that's really my, my goal in life is to just discuss this stuff. And like I said, I'm, my goal is just over the next few years, just continue to do research and prove that the government is with just withholding immense amounts of information. Um, so I'm even looking into Dulles. I wanna turn Dulles upside down. Um, and show just how, you know, you don't see hijackers getting on planes. You see, I believe, two going through an unstamped um, time sequence. You know, there's no timestamp sequence on the video. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot of different ways that you can look at this. And I can tell you with extreme confidence that there's a lot of research that's just not being done. So. Thank you. Yep. Kale. Yeah, um, I'll go next, I guess, for what Sandra was saying on my stance on the Pentagon. This is my kind of my first discussion on it. And like you and Richard, I, we really don't take a solid stance, planes, no planes again, just like the towers. But our main concern is the evidence that's being withheld, the video evidence that's being withheld, uh, just like a body cam on a police officer. Um, it, it's, they know how important it is for us to see that, and they're withholding it for reasons we don't even know. And they An call example. it a would be what Adam just was talking about. And Ed Brotherton and we all got into it that one time where we're talking about where are the plane parts, they're not, they should be cataloged and stored somewhere. And it's not mm, that yeah. we haven't, it's not that we haven't asked, it's that they won't give us the evidence. Exactly. Uh, that's what you're saying. Why aren't they giving us the evidence? I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to give an example. And then, no, no, go ahead. Please add to whatever I'm saying. Um, also, the hit on the Pentagon allowed us to go to war. That's all our tax money. That's our children's lives. That's that's the strangers were invading their lives. You know, there, there's so much involved with the Pentagon being a key to go to war. Mm -hmm. And then third, the the area that was hit, whether it was investigating the missing money that uh, Rumsfeld was talking about. Um, that area was retrofit. I believe it was renovated um, for if there was a an attack or explosion or something. So that area was also renovated for an attack. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things that keep our ears perked up for 9-11 Truth Hawaii to be involved with. And as parents, as citizens, as you know, just searching for the truth. So listening to everyone's um, case or, you know, their theories, their, you know, their outlook, their studies mm -hmm. uh, is very important for us so we can piece it together. If, if we're going to say there were planes or no planes, but 
what's called for division. Um, that's a red flag for us. And any of those that, that say, look at it my way. And if you don't look at it my way, then you're out. You know, the, the ones that get rude, the ones that get mean, the ones that go, you know, just start attacking and calling names like we're in high school or, you know, on the recess in elementary school. I don't know. Kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, kindergarten. There you go. Those are questionable. They are questionable to us. So anyway, yeah. that's that's our stance. And um, I guess we you could say we're more leaning towards explosives were planted and that whole area was retrofitted for those explosive explosives and um they're not, just not releasing the video be, videos because they they know uh we'll be able well you know even if they do release the videos the technology today it looks like somebody is actually talking and 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 there and they're not really there mm -hmm. yeah the they're not face. really talking you know what i mean i, I don't know that name of that tech they're, ca they're calling deep they, they're calling deep fakes yeah it's crazy so even when it is released i think we're all gonna be like that's not real that you know what i right. mean it's just right they waited so long it's crazy yeah. but but can i just add to the fact you know you mentioned the, the the video evidence of a plane hitting the building i mean i i think that it's if they had even one clip of a plane coming in Mm -hmm. um, they would have played that over and over and over oh, yeah. again, just like they did. And, and this is this was to add to the mass trauma of watching the uh, planes hitting the towers. And they milked that for all it was worth. They right. the media hyped up the obviously the collapse of the towers with good reason. Um, and it and it obviously happened, but they had the footage, and they were absolutely going to use that footage to drive the fear and drive the propaganda and the whole invisible enemy that is the terrorist and all that stuff. So if they had any footage of a plane hitting the Pentagon, there is no way they would be sitting on that. Yeah, and they they, they, they gave us frames, and they know what they're doing. I mean, I went to college for um, animation. You know, for one second of film, it's like 24 frames that you got to draw. So, you know, you, I think some you can bump it up to 32, but, and you can go a little bit below that, but the average is 24 frames per second. They gave us like five, seven frames and, and people are riding on that with the FOIA. That's crazy. They can't have a fluid hit. They're not showing us a fluid hit. And there's a there's there's a reason for that. I mean, it's pretty obvious, or we wouldn't be here. It's like the body cams on a police officer. You know why is that needed? We know why it's needed. There's a lot of corruption in our law enforcement. You know, um, we're human beings. There's a lot of people that are persuaded to be criminals. Doesn't matter what you're wearing a badge or a suit. So body cams on police officers is you know. The Pentagon is one of the most secure buildings in, in the world. So, I mean, we're not dumb, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. So we want those body cam footage there, Mr. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gil. Withholding of evidence. That is the big, that is a big tell. Yeah. The fact that we've got our government trying to fight against our First Amendment right to petition a government for a redress of grievances, uh, and they're fighting... No, you can't let the grand jury hear this evidence. Like, it's, that's got to be the tell. Like, come on. Like, like, right. I don't know, and plus, saying. they got us into war, too. So, I mean, that, that was their key. Yep. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Adam, and then Miles. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I thought he was going to be making an appearance, but Xander Arena has been doing some fantastic work in the um, category of uh, the video, debunking the videos. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to see that. Um, I know Richard Gage, uh, I believe his his YouTube might have been taken down. I think the presentation might have been up there. I know there are copies still available, um, so I'm sure they're going to be getting those back well, up. Well, he but... gave the whole presentation on the last last month's War Room call, so it's all, you can see it all yeah. there. Yeah, and check it out there, too. Thank you for bringing that up, so I just want to make sure everybody knew about that. Thank you. Miles, back to you. I got your 
chat and I am ready to share the screen for one minute. Yeah, so I am I was a friend of Paul Hellier and I've got five of his books here all autographed and so I sort of feel like I have to carry on. Sadly, he in his elderly age fell and hit his head and died about a year ago. But anyway, yeah, um, this is my favorite quote of his, where are the interceptors? So if you just want to play it for a minute. Yep. Oh, sound. Raise suspicions on the true role of the military on September 11 is the fact that the US air defense, which is arguably the most advanced and sophisticated in the world, was unable to intercept even one of the four hijacked airplanes in the course of over one and a half hours. I remember thinking, where on earth are the interceptors? I'm an old interceptor pilot, and it's absolutely unbelievable that hijacked airliners could fly around for an hour and 40 minutes without being intercepted. Uh, as a former Minister of National Defense, why did airplanes fly around for an hour and a half without interceptors being sc uh, scrambled? Take them uh, you know, with a quick reaction alert. They should have been in the air in five minutes or 10 minutes. If not, as a Minister of National Defense, uh, would, I would want to say, why not? This astonishing failure to respond was remarked by Senator Mark Dayton in the post 9-11 congressional hearings. But what I find much more shocking and alarming were the repeated and catastrophic failures of the leaders in charge and the other people responsible to do their jobs, to follow established procedures, to follow direct orders from civilian and military commanders. The official justification for this failure is a series of... I guess that was, we went over a minute, but that was getting good. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Paul Hellier would really appreciate it if he could be here. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thank you for that. That's uh, we've seen that that was from some, looked like Massimo Mizuko's mm -hmm. uh, New Pearl Harbor. That's right. And uh, you know, just a, an aside. Uh, anybody, I could yeah. remember Massimo's massimo mizuko's name and so i thought okay i'll just go to richard gage 911 on youtube yep. because he interviewed him but um now if of anybody course has, uh, if anybody has five and a half hours it. yeah <laughs> if you have five richard and a half gage hours is, you gotta go to rumble now yeah that's true the first thing i did i searched richard gage the first thing they youtube now presents to you is yep. uh spike lee criticizing conspiracy theorists isn't that convenient if I could see by show of hands, either really by hands or by your emoticon thing, how many people here saw Maso Mizuko's New Pearl Harbor at some point ever? All right, cool. Half of us. Uh, you, Sue, have you seen it? Yeah. I've okay. Seen it. That's all. That one's. That's a good one. It's tough to commit to. Uh, the Toronto hearings, I have not made it the whole way through the Toronto hearings. That's like eight hours. Uh, is there a link to those? Do we, is there a way to get those online for free? Oh, yeah. YouTube. Well, uh, right, yeah, YouTube. I think I you can watch Massimo's on his website. Well, oh, actually, it's in the chat. It's oh. Right now, it's on YouTube. Who knows how much? Oh, longer, that's right. You just that's the one the I clicked in the, on in the chat. The whole, yeah. the whole five and a half hours. Yeah, yes. that's it. Oh, actually, well. it's not. It's five hours. I okay. don't know where I got the half, but yeah, four hours and fifty-three minutes. It's written by an Italian. I don't know what they're called, producers or. Uh, really, was he on Richard Gage? Yet, I think he did an interview. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. A good guy, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, Toronto hearings, then you have the uh 2017 uh Cooper Union, um, Justice in Focus, which was pretty profound. Those are good things, anyways. Uh, sorry, I got sidetracked. Uh, where were we? I, I actually remember what I was saying early on in this, uh, this program was that we don't have a lot of the big dogs in the Pentagon. Uh, to be able to have these intense conversations because um, a lot of us are more like want to see those conversations. <laughs> well, 
if they were actually conversations and people would ad actually address each other's arguments, right. uh, whereas, you know, it often turns out to be a shoot down of, or, or just, you know, you ask a question and it just gets deflected and, and people run with something else. So yeah, what um, I've been trying to figure out are why are some of these researchers approaching me with deception? Hmm. All right. Here, I guess. Let me see if I can bring up Facebook real quick. Might as well talk about it. I, hats off to Lorraine. Um, I don't uh, I want to say her ability to research and meticulously question things uh, really good. Uh, but then, and I want to show examples of where people disrespect people, and it's it's I just don't want to have this anymore. I guess this is a good discussion to have about this. Uh, this is part of the problem. Also, I want to I want to publicly ask Ed Brotherton why he felt the need to contact the FBI following yeah. one of our war room. That was meetings. really weird. So what 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 were your intentions? He was he was trying to illustrate the ridiculousness. He took basically the statements from go? like three, four, five, six different people, threw them all together into one theory to demonstrate the absurdity of the theory and it was really just an exercise in mockery and nothing else. Well, I'll tell you, I, I actually, I, I think that efforts are going to be very seriously made by um, not all, of course, law enforcement. I'm not trying to paint this broad picture that we're all, um, you know, being led by a bunch of psychopaths, but I think there are going to be some elements of these um, law enforcement wings that are going to start calling people that are asking for the truth, they're gonna they're gonna dub us extremists, and so I don't know if that was some type of a, a chess move that was made, but um, I just want to publicly state that um, I'm not gonna really be a part of any meeting that that guy is at. I, I just um, that was a pretty uh, shitty thing to do, and mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to make that known publicly. Yeah, I kind of Ed's always seemed like he's an up upstanding gentleman uh, in the conversation. He's very smart. Uh, he even got a compliment from Mick Harrison saying that, you know, he's got some legal background and some talent. Um, but some of the, he always comes in with, uh, what if all of the connections of World Trade Center popped at the same time? And I'm thinking he's, and he's saying he's just playing the devil's advocate. I'm like, okay, there's devil's advocate, but then there's just like, it's being ridiculous that the building twisted and all thousands and thousands of connections all decided to pop off all together is just i don't know why he does that and it really makes me question and i'll call them it and i'll tell them it in their face now i call them the rude boys this, this group of guys um ed brotherton uh adam fitzgerald darren harvey sean russell russell and i think that's it and it wow. got me be and who Oh, and Nelson. Well, I, th I thought you would say Nelson, but. And I can include Nelson. And I only call them the rude boys because if you guys have been in some of these email chains with Barbara Honiger and that, it came unglued. He used every profanity, even some I'd never heard before on mm -hmm. her. And it was just uncalled for. There's no reason to do this. Uh, I, I think Ken, Ken Jenkins might get sucked into that, that category, but he is a person that that is a piece he has a lot in common research wise with some of those people but uh he's not a person that's going to start throwing fisticuffs no he's excellent he comes in and will compliment and he's kind to everybody uh he doesn't ever talk negatively about anyone uh does a really good job um gonna, gonna, i, I want to say real quick the twitter i was in a twitter conversation with those guys that i just mentioned and i'm like what chat am i even in and I went to a higher up in the thread of the Twitter thread, and they were on a sub thread between Mick West and uh, Mick West. Hang on a second. And uh, what's the other guy's name? Ed Current. And if, I don't know if any guys are familiar with Ed Current's hoax, minus World Trade Center 7 hoax video. These are two known trolls, Mick West and, and uh, Eddie Current. And here, all those guys that I just mentioned are in their threads agreeing with them on things. And I'm thinking this is just, it really makes me question.
anyway. Okay, but wanna, let's we don't we don't need to talk about them. No, right I would I, I only say that because yeah. they know I would say that to no, no, them right. in person because right and right. I'm doing things I don't want to do. Anyways, the reason I got all of that it, let me hang on one second, not Adam, let me make a point here. Uh in this screen that you can see, Lorraine made a post about the Sitgo station, about a flash of light off in the top corner here, which I searched for it like 12 times and I couldn't see it. Yeah, it was it. very, very, very hard <laughs> to see. I tried really hard to. And I'm like, I'm, and it, playing devil's advocate, I'm like, okay, that could have been anything. But she, that's regardless. She presented it. And then you get these people that do the laugh modicons, which is Nelson Martin's. And it's just, it's offensive. She lays out, this is what's great. She not only posted one video of it, she came back with like what? color what? photos, yeah, time stamps, um, actually shows where people were standing, where the cameras were located. Like yeah. this is a meticulous researcher and hats off to anybody that goes to that length. Uh, I love this because you're not talking about Sitco. We're not talking about Chandler. We're not talking about Cossie. We're not talking about the rude boys. We're, we're talking about the raw evidence and then they just make it personal and there's no reason to do that. Incredible. And they don't address any of our evidence. All he right. does is just laugh. Like we'll say something to them. And then Ed comes in. William Lagasse said he saw a plane hit the Pentagon. I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> it's not accurate. He, he said a plane hit the Pentagon. He didn't say he saw the plane hit the right. Pentagon, which is a big, big difference. And the only reason I knew that is because I called him. I was with Sandra. And I'm like, well, let's call him. <laughs> like, the phone's ringing. I'm calling William Lagasse. And I got him on the phone. Yeah, and, and was, Lorraine was asking me what, what I, I couldn't remember what the conference, because, you know, it was you and him. I don't think it was on speakerphone. But anyways, uh, what was, uh, what, what, what would you say was the takeaway from that discussion? Like, he basically reconfirmed what he the, said to the Sitco guys, right? Yeah, there's a stone wall that runs the, the Arlington Cemetery, and the plane flew over the stone wall. Now, the stone wall, the Arlington Cemetery is north of the Sitco station uh, but then i i remember him saying ask him about seeing the plane and he don't i don't I, I, this is where i don't want my memory to be my enemy here and say that i'm recreating this but i swear he said that he saw the plane but he didn't see it hit the pentagon and right. he said he'd like to have further conversations but i had to go through the pentagon and get permission to talk to him which right. i think he was just like protecting himself and uh and i actually just posted that conversation with me in the pentagon poc or whatever i called them and i put the video up here somewhere uh of me talking to them on the phone anyway so i don't know where i was going with that kale uh, you're up i just i just wanted yeah i just wanted to add, Alexander just joined and mark just joined thank you for and... joining fellas and if Lorraine is still on the call, I'm wondering if Lorraine, if you can hear all of us and if you have a good connection and I don't know if you have the ability to raise your hand if you wanna say something, uh, cause you're on the phone, I think. Um, but uh, welcome to the call and jump in whichever way you need to jump in, I guess is what I'm saying. Hi, this is Lorraine, can you hear me? Hi, yes, we can yeah. hear you. Yes, uh, I was trying to get in on my computer, but that didn't work. It worked the other day, but it didn't work this morning. So um, anyway, I can hear everybody and see you. And uh, I've only been here for about 20 minutes, I think. So I caught the tail end of what Adam was saying and then... Well, thanks for being up at 7 in the morning on a Sunday, because that's oh, where you're at right now. And yeah. for joining here and... Uh, and again, like, thanks for all the unbelievable research you do and for all the information you put out there. And um, yeah, yeah well, thanks. it is kind of a session, I suppose. <laughs> but um, I thought Lorraine. it's disappointing, like Jean said, that people don't respond in kind. You know, they just attack me rather than bringing any evidence. Like, I'm quite happy to hear it if there's any evidence that proves anything I've said is wrong. 
Mm -hmm. I was looking for the one beautiful graphic you have of all the different uh, witnesses and the oh, points. I have that. I have that. Is, do you have a website or something where you, because I looked on your, you keep your Facebook page pretty clean. Uh, yeah, I don't put anything of that on my Facebook page. I just uh, put it in forums and things where I um, talk about this. All right. Um, is there someone yeah, to get, I guess Sandra will give it to me, but do you have, for what you discussed, uh, do you put it anywhere? I've got a lot of images on um, Flickr. Flickr. So, okay. yeah. All right. Um, under the name Ruby Gray. So there's uh, like about 180 images on there, I think, which is nowhere near as many as I've got. But I'm going to try and... Uh, well, I've got to put something together a bit better, more methodical. Right. It's methodical to me, but it's very hard to explain it all in a few minutes to anybody else, as Sandra knows when I spoke to her yesterday. Very much so. Yeah. yeah uh, I just shared my screen. Can you see the picture? Yes. Oh, hang on. Thank um, you. Got here That's, yeah, I'm just sharing the picture that you had uh, posted with all the witnesses. Yeah. Um, that is way out of date. I need to put a lot more names on that, which obviously they don't actually fit. So we're going to try and work out a way to have something where you can click on the icons and read a little bit of every person's testimony, you know, on a dot on the page. Lorraine, is Ruby Gray AY or EY? AY. Is, it, is your picture a brunette lady? No. Not from San Jose, uh, no, New York. Like a ruby stone. Yeah. Yeah, ruby icon. gray. Yeah. Hmm. Can't find you. Bummer. Okay, I'll try and um, I'll try and send it to you somehow. I'm not sure how to work it with this system. Um, That's all right. Uh, oh, wait. Ruby grew underground? No. Uh, you're on Flickr, are you? Here, let me show you. Share screen to, uh, I don't know if you can, or can you not see the screen? I got a million Ruby, two, four, six. Um, oh yeah, okay. Uh, no, those are not me. Huh. Yeah. I just love how social media works. No. You've been censored. Ruby gray, people. Nope. Um, anyway, we'll figure it out some other time. Yeah, Lorraine, have you ever shared it with me on Telegram? Your actual Flickr address? Uh, who's talking now? Is it... <laughs> that would Is be Mark. Jerry? That's Mark. Mark. Oh, Mark. That Mark. Yeah. Um, Mark. Uh, no, I don't think so, probably. I've just shared them off my phone or my tablet, whatever. Images. Um... Ah, oh, there you are. Yeah, uh, I'll just... Okay, I'll send it to you on Telegram now. Okay. Okay. I only have Telegram on my... Or to him. He's, um, I think yeah. she's saying she's sending it to me and then I can share it. Okay, that works. Mm -hmm. um, so we have all of these witnesses. As I understand it, some say they did see it hit the Pentagon. Uh, one guy says it hit, it like cartwheeled and the nose hit like right, hit the ground right before the wall. Uh, Tim Timmerman says he was in the Navy Annex. I'm not sure if he said he. No, he was um, over the other side of Army Navy Drive. He, he disappeared. Nobody's ever talked to him ever again. Hmm. In a, a high rise apartment. He was he was he was, coach, he, he was coaching another girl who was on the phone with the, another news station at the same time, telling her to tell them what she saw. What do you guys attribute this wide disparity in in what happened at the Pentagon? Like, why is there such a spectrum of possibilities? Uh, how better could I ask that? Uh, 
so magic. You mean why is there even such a division in the first place? Is, is that it's what a, such asking? a great degree, whether there's a plane or whether there's not a plane. <laughs> that is just. Uh, I think because there were multiple events there, which created a lot of confusion. Um, and so people do have, um, you know, firm opinions on what happened and, and they're talking about, they're describing the same event from different perspectives. Um, and the other thing is the whole thing essentially was a magic trick of deception. So there, you know, these people that there are probably a handful of folks that really believe they saw a plane hit the building. Yet what they were seeing was, you know, pyroclastic uh, effects as something was potentially flying over. But in their mind, that they're never going to reconcile that. They saw a large explosion as this object was approaching the building. They may have well have seen a David Copperfield um, presentation, you know, and they're convinced that she teleported from the box or whatever, you know. Um, so the smoke and mirrors was effective. Yeah, and I noticed that a lot of the quote unquote witness test, because I, I got attacked at one point saying, how can you defend one side if you haven't really looked at, at the other side? And I said, okay, fair enough. Uh, send me your best evidence. And someone sent me a video with all these supposed witnesses that claimed that a plane had hit the Pentagon. And as I was listening to it, most of the people in that clip did not say they saw a plane hit the Pentagon. They said they saw a plane and then they saw an explosion. And right. it's like what you're saying, because now an, an hour earlier, they had already heard the news about the World Trade Center towers. They're already thinking of planes hitting buildings. Now this is the Pentagon, a plane is coming. They see an explosion and a fireball and to me, it's easy for them to make that connection because they're already in that mind frame of planes hitting hitting buildings, right? So it's not, and, and, and most people would have been at quite a distance away from the building. And, um, and I, I guess my question is like, would someone ever have noticed if a plane flew, kept on flying over the building? Or would the plane have gotten lost in that, you know, fireball, and um, and people would have just lost it, or would their focus not? Have, because that would be a risk to take. Mm. That Albert, would be, and I, yeah. Albert, Albert you on that. <laughs> that, that's his biggest point. Remember, Al, he said, you know, why would the government take the the chance of anybody even having a camera or witnessing a plane not hit, hitting the building? And I thought that was a great, great argument because. Mm -hmm. You're right. If someone actually catches it on a camera and releases it, um, that could it's do over. a lot of damage, right? Whereas my counter argument, and you know, leading back to what I said at the beginning of the call, it's you know, if we all had a statement to make about the Pentagon, my one statement would be, um, why would the government risk an operation like this, putting? the an airplane in the hands of hijackers who are human and who may change their minds or where something could go wrong if that plane is off by a single hair mm -hmm. they're hitting the, the epicenter of the power brass of the united states and taking out their own people so to me it, there's no way that an event that's been orchestrated obviously for years is going to be put into the hands of vulnerable, frail human beings. To me, that's just, it's the one thing that would never, ever, ever make sense to me. So uh, you can argue remote control if you want, but to me, there's no way that hijackers were actually taking those planes and flying them into that building. So that's the one thing that there's no way, nobody's going to convince me that the government <laughs> took that chance. It's, it's just, there's no way. Well, Sandra, I, they, I, they, did prepare, they did actually do something to prepare for the eventuality that someone might have seen the plane play over and that was having this, um, Lorraine can, can speak more clearly about it, but there was a second plane in the area that people did see. And the C-130, uh, Lorraine, can you talk more about that? Hang on, let's, uh, right before we go to that, Lorraine, hang on, we've had Kale and Morgan's out, have had their hand up for a while. Oh, sorry we're, we'll that. talk about the C-130 in a second, but go ahead, Kale. Yeah, let me just add to Adam 
Adam was talking about Ed or anybody, um, FBI, whatever. Just Sorry. know it doesn't matter whether we have our suspicions with people like him and we have since the beginning, but just know, don't be afraid because it doesn't matter. No matter what we say is on record. Right. So you have they a... own the internet. The government owns the internet. So <laughs> um, now we have the centralized, like the hub for 9-11. They got all our names. They know exactly what we're saying. And <laughs> there's no crypto um, web browser. There's no, you know, like uh, digital currency whether you go crypto or blockchain doesn't matter in the end once we go digital that's it mm -hmm. um so us online talking they know exactly what we're saying and who's who and their artwork algorithm the red flagged and doesn't matter who we are but i would love to see someone like you going up against someone like ed because that guy you know, or Adam or the rude boys, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I have my own cowbell and that's with trolls and mm -hmm. bullies and all that, you know, that's when I bite back. But um, besides that, being afraid, what, what we say and who, you know, what meetings we're in and whatnot, it, that doesn't matter. Right. At this my point, analogy, it doesn't matter. Um, my, it's all on record. The analogy I drew in my mind as a cartoon of this pirate ship, dysfunctional pirate ship, and we're all on this ship. <laughs> we're the USS 9-11 uh, Truth Movement, and we've got the DEW people and the CGI and all of us, the planers, no planers, missiles, whatever. We're all on this boat, and uh, we all... Uh, yeah, I hate to see... Purposefully or... Yeah. we all want justice like maybe. adam has great information <laughs> like like i'm i'm learning of him right now and and hearing his his work and it's it's something i would like to follow with what we're doing here in hawaii but to limit yourself against someone like ed you could shut him down no, it's so you... easy because all all they do once once they get to that point they go to that kindergarten yeah. um recess bully uh you're an idiot you're stupid yeah. uh you know because they, they don't have any more argument their their script is they're at the end of their script so then they go mm. and they personally attack but then, just, know, let's, let's let's not waste our time with talking yeah. about them it's just yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah no it's, it's fine facility. i just wanted to let adam know yeah. that it doesn't matter whether we're on record or not i end it with them with one thing do you they support know. do you support the federal grand jury petition and I can't, they, none of them will. Like, okay, then it's done. I'm done with you. If you can't support the federal grand jury petition. Anyway, thank you. Morgan, you're up. Yeah, um, to, to add to your question of how we come to this disparity, wide disparity on the Pentagon. Um, mm -hmm. And just to follow up where, where Sandra left off, uh, I think one, one point that, would explain some of the trajectory that uh, the Adam Fitzgerald group, shall we say, is coming in with. They they base everything they do in uh, the geopolitical. So they're looking in the behind the scenes, the follow the money, the mm -hmm. CIA, the you know looking at uh, a, a ton of different things from that aspect, and they. It, it, as as Adam Fitzgerald has put out a few videos on, say, like David Ray Griffin, that are bone dry of any real criticism, and they really, really, really show his cards when it comes to knowing anything but the the uh, geopolitical. He he doesn't understand a damn thing about the the science of New York. Um, okay. Yeah. And, but, but I did, but like, like, uh, uh, like you were just saying, um, uh, uh, Kale, they do add a lot of really important information, especially on the hijackers. They are very, very well depth 
depth or whatever on on that area and uh they've they've you know uh, i've i've sort of come anew on on that um that said i wanted to uh, to to respond to your earlier uh you know what what are what what did you come to say here at at, at this at this meeting and i really don't have anything just to, to say i uh sort of refuse so far to take an opinion on the pentagon but i did want to say um uh going going with uh, uh what i sort of gleaned from what adam eisenberg had said um it, it looks like he's taking a real systematic approach to gathering evidence and collecting info research um and and my uh you know knowing that this group is really about activism and activism to to get to the non-choir uh, uh, the, the, the public out there, um, you know, I, I, I just say that, that, uh, uh, it, it would, what, what would be the harm of putting all of everybody's views, everybody's research, everybody's supposition, everybody's high hypothesis in one place, um, encyclopedically, uh, so that we can take it away from the dark corners where people fight each other with all kinds of ad hominems um and uh and and put that in that place so that the public both the public and the you know the basic people in the 9-11 truth movement like me and the public outside the 9-11 truth movement could come to that place and have a chance to make up their own minds, and even more importantly than that, learn. Uh, because I think as soon as you start delving into the waters of 9-11 truth, uh, you're going to come into things that even if it, it, this, you know, whatever, it, whatever the hypothesis or the assertion of what happened there is, you're going to find out that there are things all over the place that obliterate the official story. Uh, so I, I really think it would be great if we could put things together in that manner, um, in a way to, to help people understand how, how unhinged the official narrative is. And beyond that, um, I really just want to take this moment to thank Adam Eisenberg for his service and his continued bravery in standing up against a wall of uh, whatever you want to call it. Thank you. Yes. That's it. Right on, Morgan. Sandra and I have been talking in the past about this, a way to, we wanted to have Pentagon discussions in a way that somebody could categorize uh, all the data given so that it could be put in a knowledge base. So then you could come back to like, uh, nobody's ever, Xander brought up a whole different category of this, forgive me, what's, I don't even know what you call it, angularization of the camera. Angular uh, field of view. Yeah, right hey, I got more info on that for today, guys, whenever you're ready. I'll stand okay. by. So here opens a whole other category. So you would open this, like the Dewey Decimal System in a library, open it up, categorize all these arguments. Somebody could respond to an argument, have subsections, and just build off of that. Exactly what you're saying, like an encyclopedic way to reference and refute each and every statement made. Because Facebook, let's hand it, we all agree that Facebook is not the place to try to, to uh, categorize and uh, reference materials, which is, it's a nightmare. I think it's made to be that purpose. I'm not sure to jump the line, but I can just tell you that the Orion Project will be doing just that. I, I will welcome all the views, even the ones that I, I disagree with. I mean, you're absolutely right. If we're not going to get the information, which I'm hopefully going to be able to show the world that I can't get, then we can at least take all the puzzle pieces and let people do what they're going to do. And ultimately, the truth shines bright. So. Right on. Do you, Thank you. Do you have help, Adam, or are you doing this by yourself? I, have, I, I can tell you guys I'm, I'm open to help and I wanted to announce earlier, um, if you'd like to um, get on my email list and kind of get in my, my I'm going to start like kind of a, a group discussion about kind of like similar to what we're doing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start that if you guys are interested in partaking in that and really um, the, the most important thing for me right now, I'm, I've kind of crossed this barrier where, uh, like I said, this person's taking, making threats directly publicly at me. Mm. And so I just need to start being very, very out in the open about the things that I've been up to in the last, I would say, year and a half. So, so that's going to be happening. So get at me if you want to 
you know, get on the email list and be a part of that. Cool. Thank you, Adam. Yep. I'm going to go to Kale and Xander. I just want everyone to know we're at 630. And with this number of people, I like to give everybody a last 30 second round the horn kind of thing. So we've got about 20 minutes left. <laughs> And Xander said he would like to share something. So now what happened with the last hand? Who was a hand disappeared? I guess you're yeah, up. Yeah. Just down. <laughs> sorry. Pass, yeah. Pass. Sorry, guys. I, I was realizing I was an hour late. I missed the whole I, my bad. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So um I FOIAed uh, DOD uh for um, more camera data and I got their response. So I want to share that with you guys. Uh, I'll share a screen. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, Jerry, forgive me again, because I wanted to know your view. What was your view? What camp are you in again? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. All right. So, um, oh, hang on one second. I just yep. want to hear. There you are, Jerry. What was your view again? Well, um, I'm in the North uh, Flight Path camp, but, you know, I, I researched this uh, Back in the time of around 2001 to 2005, I was uh, active on mailing lists and stuff. And it was a very confusing scene about the Pentagon. Um, a lot of the researchers' names were completely different, but uh, the controversies were much the same. Uh, some people looked at all the evidence saying that there was an airplane that hit the Pentagon. And, and by golly, they were convinced that anybody who said otherwise was a government agent and vice versa. And I think a lot of the passion has to do with wanting to get things right. And a lot of the confusion has to do with that there's a, an elephant out there with uh, lots of different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very confusing. And, and also I would say over the years since then, uh, that work like what Lorraine has been doing and what uh, the citizen investigation team did has kind of clarified things in my own mind to the point where I'm much more convinced than before that there was no plane that hit the Pentagon and that there was an overflight on the North Path. So uh, I, it's interesting to get back into it to some extent after all these years and, and see what has developed. Well, wait a second, yeah, I'm looking in the room now. I'm hats off to... for being, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, I, he, he said he, he was involved in discussions as far back as 2002. Yeah, right. So honestly, yeah. I mean, it took some of us a little longer than that to, yeah, right. yeah. to even consider the possibilities. Uh, I'm always amazed at anybody who's been on board uh, from day one because, you know, we didn't have the internet back then to kind of, you know, share the information that easily. And um so yeah, wow. So again, I don't take a position, but I think most of the room, the the round table today is leaning no plane hit the building. All right, that's just interesting. Okay, I'm sorry. There's Xander. also a lot of people just, with no position, which I find is interesting. I mean, you're you're not the only one, you know. Morgan just said it, and yeah, there's a lot of people that where it's not cut and dried, where they're just they're leaning a certain way, but they're not excluding all the possibilities, and I. You know, it's the hallmark of an open mind. It's it's. Uh, it it kind of sounds yeah. like a lot of the hardcore uh, uh, people who have one particular position that they're defending to the death uh, have kind of abandoned the discussion before I showed up. It seems like yeah, that's, that, here. That, that's partially true. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. I'm glad to get to hear from you. Uh, thank you for being on the call again, first time. Uh, Xander, it's all yours. Thank you. And after Xander, I just want to see if there's anything Lorraine would really like to bring to yeah. the table. I'm sorry. We really yes. made an effort to be on this call, and I just want to be able to give her some time to say anything important. So we're 15 minutes before we do the round the horn. So, okay, I'll try to be fast. <laughs> sorry. Good. Yep. All right. So, um, so I FOIA'd them. I asked for camera make purchase uh, contract information. You guys can see the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, so focal length, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, was very clear on which cameras specified uh, that they were located here, contract dates, um, when that was constructed. Uh, so gave this to the Office of Secretary of Defense um, the, uh, because they're over the uh, Pentagon police. All right, so um, got their reply. They immediately said, you know, we, uh, we got your, your deal and we're gonna get back to you in November um, is, is what they said. And, um, and that's this response. They said it's an unusual request. It's going to go beyond their 20-day statutory 
Um, and it's basically, it's going to take a while. You know, we have 3,000 requests, so buckle up. Uh, here's your <laughs> anticipated time. Um, oh, what have you. Sorry, I can't. Uh, right on, Xander. Yeah, so anyway, so they so they gave me that. It was going to be a little bit. But then, curiously, um, yesterday, I got a final reply from them. Um, and so that is uh, here. Uh, this is an email. So these are the contacts there. Uh, you know, they've CC'd a few folks. They got my um, my work email and my other. Uh, and so here's the action officer on the response. Um, and I, frankly, I feel like they, they were really pretty helpful with this. Um, and let me, where's the actual freaking response? Oh, damn. Sorry, folks. You're okay. Get... Take your time. You're good. Yeah. All right. We're going to jump into my email for it then um that's me looking for you guys here it is please find attached okay final response so this is it um they said that they do not have responsive records um they made an effort looking around they found the interview which we're all aware of with uh, uh it's austin and and whatnot i this is the first time i ever read this interview where they talk about how they made the screen saves um, that over overwrote the wrong date on it and whatnot. So mm. that's, read that interview. So that's in this link here. But basically, they said they don't have a record. Now, this interview opened some other questions for me because it seemed to me that the FBI are really the ones that got in there and pulled all of the tapes and all of the data that they that they could, um, and took possession of it for about three years. Um, then they claim when they were returned to the Pentagon, um, they were overwritten. So. Mm. basically it's gone um i did some data some searching on federal contacts their retention requirements are six years at max so there's really no chance that any of the um contract i was hoping we could get some purchase information on these cameras um the gentleman in this interview would be uh pennington might be one person if we could find him uh, we could ask him what he thinks these cameras were um, or possibly this Austin uh, person there in this interview right here, which is at the HO uh, Historical Office um, of Defense, whatnot. That's where this interview is, is housed. Um, Excellent, buddy. I found the FOIA record for, for that particular uh, request. It was made in 2011 um, that, got, that got that oral history released to the public. The oral history was conducted in 2006. The oral history is interesting. It seemed to me that there was an internal researcher or somebody at the historical office at the Pentagon that really did have some questions about like why the wrong date was on there. And in 2006, this is right before the full frame video was released. And this Pentagon DOD per staff seemed to, she seemed to be really, you know, wanting to know why we didn't have the accurate date. And um, then she got an explanation that made sense to her and that was the record. But it's curious that the video doesn't have the date on it, the date and time. So it would seem to me that they are maybe still trying to hide the actual precise to the second or minute um, time of whatever this incident or event was that was captured on the camera. Now, the last thing I'll, I want to show you guys before turning it over to um, Lorraine is just some other stuff I've been working on that really further shores up and protects uh, the, um, the work I was doing on uh, on the camera data, because when I went back and looked at the video, I, the number of vehicles that are caught in the same frame traveling through um, really, uh, I hate using this fucking, excuse me, this word, uh, <laughs> debunks. <laughs> uh, it really disproves the argument that there was this substantial distortion in that side of the screen. Oh, okay. Because when here yeah, I took a bunch of stills of this stuff of all of these different vehicles that are moving through. Um, uh, sorry, I'm I'm accessing a drive on another camera, so it's taking. Good. A and this little squeaky chair he has. That's a bird. That's a bird. Yeah, <laughs> birds, parrots. Yeah. So there's these camera sequences with the vehicles moving through, and um, and when you look at the vehicles, it's like. Oh, it's, oh, this was camera sequence B. So that was the vehicle that drove in the background. And so I'm going to put this together in a nice PowerPoint. Um, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm going to actually try to remove the distortion. 
but yeah, yeah. So here's like this is a this is the police car moving through. I mean, the diff distance in wheelbase and the distance between here that you know, like the where the yeah. windshield connects to the car and comes here, when it's over on this side of the screen versus when it's in the middle is pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's distortion, but it's not like you know some big 155 foot aircraft is somehow going to be like you know dwarfed down. It's the, that part of the lens is not that distorted. It's it's a little bit truncated, but not. You know um, nothing that that changes the findings at all so that was reassuring to just see the camera footage nice. and, and that yeah this is whatever whatever passed through that camera is not american airlines 77 full stop 100 and oh and the other thing so so even though dod doesn't have the information now on our on our focal um length and whatnot and field of view this is something I'm happy to uh, debate, you know, a guy like Chandler or whoever, or Wayne Cosby, or whoever wants to, you know, come at me from the other side, because when you look at this curb, look, this is the key thing. Look at the curb that the camera post sits on. Okay. Mm -hmm. And look at the distance. Sorry, this is such a small, let me blow this up for you guys. You're looking at it from, all right, here it is. So from the edge of the camera post to the edge of the field of view, do you see that length of curb? Mm -hmm. It's roughly two traffic cones wide. And when you look at the maybe three, we'll give it three traffic cones. When you look at the overall map view uh, uh, from Google Earth, the distance that this curve actually extends, it extends out 10 feet, which means the line of sight from camera post A through camera post B um, intersects this curb, um, which puts it basically at dead nuts, 75 degree ish field of view. I, so it, it's all lining up perfectly. The optics are lining up perfectly to the original field of view that I came out with. So there's no way they're going to be able to come in and say, oh, well, it was really a 180 degree field of view or even a 90 or a 110 or whatever they want to say. If they want to try to pretend like it's a wide angle field of view, this little curb right here proves that it's not. And um, and this is where I like, this is my cowbell is coming at them with the claims because it's not when, you know, I'm fine for anybody to have a different opinion or to be agnostic on an opinion, but if you're going to argue something that is provably false, like the fact that somehow this camera view sweeps out past this curb when you can see that it doesn't, well, then your motives are not pure. And, um, and so for that gang, they're going to have to either reconcile this or basically come out with the fact that their motives are not pure so i'll leave that's a decision for them to make. Oh, you got on the left side of the screen real quick, you can see that shadow line. That shadow yeah, it, line goes straight. It doesn't really distort at the end where it's approaching the edge of the camera. Oh yeah, um, totally. Yep. Yeah. Good observation. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty flat. It's not all curved. There's like a, a real mild little, I've done Photoshop on this and you, there's a mild curve. It's real subtle. And Oh, in that interview that I posted, um, Pennington talks about the fact that these cameras were specifically designed to enlarge the driver's face. It's all there for. They're not wide angle field of views. They're not anything else. It's just to enlarge the driver's face. And that's right. what they do. They kind of blow up the middle a little bit. They're not even really shrinking the outside. They're just blowing the middle up a little bit, which puts this tiny curve in. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, another thing with the field of view, you notice the discoloration on the concrete here? You mm -hmm. see, this is asphalt and this is concrete. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. When you look at the Google Earth image and you look at um, there, this concrete pad is a square and it's a small square. And you don't even see the edge of the concrete pad on this side. And on this side, you don't even see the corner over there. It's another way that you can line up that triangular field of view and mm. see that it's actually a really tight angle. So everything stands. There's so many things that are coming into place with this. And some of the screens, when, when you see the explosion, the, the pyroclastic effects or whatever, pyrotechnic effects, um, the airport, the helipad uh, control tower is illuminated, uh, backlit. And actually, I... I think I see the edge of the concrete to pavement underneath the cop car. Oh, do you? okay. So yeah, just it right just there. Start, yeah, just okay, starts. Just yep, right, right there. there. Yep. So there you go. So now to go to Google Earth and snap a line through that section, and you're going to see that it lines up perfectly with with the angles that I've already. Yeah, drawn. I got you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So it all falls into place. Now and this too. This um this this is like back in here. This is the control tower. Mm -hmm. the, you know. When it's backlit from the explosion, you'll see the distance between the building and it. It also kind of shows, wow, like we're really looking at a very tight window of the lawn. You know, it's not, you're not looking at a bunch of stuff. So this plane, if it was at 175 or 177, should have been massive. Um, it's not there. Whatever this is, it's, I think something, 
I think personally, and I'm going to just close with this and turn it over to Lorraine. Like, I think something, I don't know what we're looking at. I don't know if we're looking at a sky warrior. I don't know if we're looking at a missile. I don't know, but something transected this field of view because they did pull these pictures on the next day. Um, at least according to all of their sworn statements and, and the fact that they um, they said that they pulled these pictures and, and there's a lot of people involved in the declarations that they pulled these pictures. Um, testimony that they went to the security camera room, how they put, retrieved them, who the images were given to. There's a lot of details in there that I just don't think they'd, they'd make up in, in retrospect. And, and then, um, you know, they didn't have time to make something fake i whatever this thing is I, I don't know that's just what i'm leaning towards i'm not 100 percent on that but i'm leaning towards something flew over the lawn and i think as it, we're going to go at this it's probably whatever it is came at it from a little bit more of over the helipad than actually that light pole i don't think it flew on the light pole flight path i think if anything it kind of came at more of like a direct 90 degree to the building whatever it was all right i gotta cut you off bro perfect love, thanks love... done. <laughs> thank you that's there, that is an amazing amount of research on a very spe specialized topic, and I love it. Uh, thank you so much for the work you put into that. Good job. Uh -huh. it, even, as soon as Chandler heard it, he was like, well, there's something I can listen to. Like, that was just, that's good stuff. It's deep, but it's good. Uh, we'll go to Lorraine. Do you have anything for the group, Lorraine? Yeah, uh, I'll just mention what Xander was talking about, possibly a missile or something did hit the building there. Um, there's only one person I've ever come across, and that was on a Let's Roll Forum thread, who said she was there on the I-395 that day, and she saw something hit the Pentagon that was not a plane. It was very slim and narrow. Nobody else has ever said that. I mean, I don't know how fast missiles travel. I don't know where it could have come from. I don't know how much of it you would see, or how most people what most people would see they they probably would be concentrating on a big plane that they could see but anyway i tried to contact her and she'd long gone by then but hmm. um she was like a fairly credible regular poster on that forum but um that's interesting uh anyway about the c-130 i think that deserves an entire program of its own um i just came across some new information on that uh, last week or the week before. Uh, yeah, somebody... forgive me. I forgot to go back to the C-130 thing. So I'm so sorry. Yeah. Forgive me about that. Uh... That's right. Oh, well, very short amount of time. Um, yeah, the government has recently released a whole load of information. And uh, amongst that was testimony from the crew of the C-130, not just mm. the pilot, but some of the crew. And they gave totally different story from what the pilot gave. Wow. Uh, it, I'll have to, to enlarge on that probably on the, on the next Facebook one. and um, sort of contrast the two um, viewpoints. But it sounds to me like the crew was told to say that they went here while the pilot has publicly said many times that he went on a totally different route, which is, again, different from the radar so that's all very interesting, but certainly uh, Lieutenant Colonel Steve O'Brien, his oh, version of his flight path does not agree with the radar. So. Does this match with what you're saying then? Uh, news article I just found, C-130 crew, crew saw plane, saw Pentagon strike, officials confirmed. Yeah. Well, they didn't actually see the Pentagon strike because they were so far away from it, they couldn't make out where it was. Right. To see it was a couple of minutes before he got there and then identified where the fire was, and that was the Pentagon. But he said it looks like the plane has hit the Pentagon. And right. uh, on all the audio uh, records, they have deleted the spaces in between um, verbal communications. So it sounds like he's saying it as soon as it crashed. But in fact, he said it. It looked like the Pentagon had oh, looked like the plane had crashed. It was a couple of minutes before he said it looks like the plane went into the Pentagon. He did not know when he first saw the fireball that it was at the Pentagon. He couldn't tell where it was. He said the sun was in his eyes, and um, he could not make out where the plane had landed or hit or where the explosion came from. Hmm. So a lot of people are confused about that, and um, but 
Steve O'Brien was quite adamant that he did not see it actually hit. He saw a fireball, couldn't tell where it was until he got closer. Oh. Oh, so some, some of the information on that has disappeared. Uh, there was a guy called, um, oh, I his name, I don't know, uh, who took photos of the plane and they have mostly disappeared. I think there's only one left on the internet. So much of this old information that was researched many years ago has just disappeared, which is very disappointing. It's very hard to find. On, on that note, yeah, I just, you guys just saw it there. Pilots for 9-11 Truth is now defunct. Uh, Rob Balsamo, as much of a jag off as he was to me, rest in peace. Uh, yes, yeah. he was pretty much me. He accused me of crashing his website. He called me the F word in every form of the English language it's possible. <laughs> but, I don't oh, understand. Well. <laughs> but, uh, those on the same side. Yeah. yeah. Alcoholics aren't known for their um, congeniality. All right. <laughs> the game, what drove him to it? You know. All right. True. Pursuit, isn't it? That you put everything into. He did some brilliant work, and now that's not yeah. accessible on the internet anymore. Which is tragic. So, I had just I was searching for an episode where I saw pilots flying the simulator. And I'm like, I know I saw that. How did I see that? Where did I see it? I'm searching the internet, searching, searching. Finally, I come across the thing where I see Jesse Ventura in a simulator with the guy. And I'm like, okay, it's Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theory show. And I look it up and I get this clip and there's this guy in sunglasses walking with Jesse Ventura to the simulator. And I'm like, who's this guy in the glasses? And after all this more research, it's Rob Balsamo. I'm like, oh, that's what he looks like. That's him. <laughs> you know, on that show, they didn't recreate um, Pani Hanjur's path. Not even close. Oh, really? Yeah. I have a, a some people in here have seen it. I, I have a, <clears throat> a Google map that I can share in the chat where I took the FDR data and plotted all the points. And you can see I would do it from, I don't know, like seven miles out and have about 50 to 100 points. I'm not sure. And each time you click on the point, you can see the altitude, the speed, time to impact. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just pretty interesting. One thing that I was talking to Xander about is that the la I think the last 40 seconds, the plane is supposed to go from 312 knots to 488 knots. Oh, no, I just said the last 40 seconds. Yeah, it's supposed to have accelerated from 312 knots to 488 knots. In, I haven't been able to confirm that in 757 has the thrust to be able to accelerate. I mean, it's over 220 miles an hour in 40 seconds hmm. at, gro at ground level. So the air, the de air density is going to right. be, a, be a factor, but whether or not a plane can even accelerate that much fast that quickly a stock plane <laughs> yeah that's not flown by a pilot anyway i'm getting sidetracked um let's go around the room thank you all for being here just want to give everybody like 30 seconds um so tomorrow would be the normal 9 11 war room but it's the first program we're not going to have is a father's day uh i have this great opportunity with my son and my dad for the first time and i don't know a dozen years it's been a long time so uh and hopefully all of you will have a happy father's day as well a respectful or solemn father's day um so around the horn 30 seconds for the group about the pentagon discussion next one will be next month at uh we say the third thursday of the month that's so confusing Maybe july the 16th can we just because the third thursday yeah, the 17th sorry do we just want to start doing something easier, like the first Saturday of the month? Like the so, but then that means it's going to be in two weeks. <laughs> no, there's uh, nothing. I, I'm the one who's keeping track. You don't need to. So. Uh, okay, that's fine. When is July it? July seventeenth. July. No, that's a Sunday. Oh, sorry, July sixteenth. Then July sixteenth. Yeah. July sixteenth for the next Pentagon discussion. 30 seconds each person, roughly 30 seconds for the good of the order, for the good of the group. Uh, we'll start up here. Lawrence, anything for the group? Nope, you're muted, brother. Thank you. Uh, I do have something for the group. 
put it in the chat, which is the link to 911 Synthesis and uh, my email uh, and my uh, home phone number. If anyone wants to chat about that, I'd be glad to Zoom with anyone if they uh, check that site out and want to. Um, Do you talk Pentagon there? Absolutely. Oh, it's right on. The, Pent the Pentagon Airborne Sortie on that one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Adam Eisenberg. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, and just, uh, again, you know, this is, uh, I, I really do believe that if we work together, we can go a long way. So uh, my efforts are really in the basement right now, so to speak. Um, I've got a lot of information that I'm kind of working with others on right now, just to kind of slowly kind of show what I'm working on and, and kind of figuring out how it can best be wielded. Um, so I want to thank those people that are helping with that. Uh, rest assured, my efforts will be public as soon as they can really be um, out there. So I give it a little bit of time, but I, I, I think I'm on to something. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Kale. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to clarify. I was talking about Adam Eisenberg, not Fitzgerald, and um, listening to his information today. Um, it would be good to maybe not stir the pot, but you know, get some, uh, uh, not the beats, but you know. Discussions. Yeah, where we can, you know, kind of challenge some, some uh, like the Eds and Adams, but you know, without the. Well, that's the what this is school. supposed to be. Uh, I hope, <laughs> I would like to see some Preparing more. Very docile today. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Chandler will be back because that'll that'll get things a little lively that we could get Honiger in here and Chandler and uh, McKee. Oh, yeah. Then with all of these folks here, too. And Adam and his group. Oh, that would be hopping. Would be but it, was, it was actually a breath of fresh air because that kind of shows, you know, some of that division is starting to hopefully fade away. Yeah. It's right. going to the phone. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just wanted I just wanted to add to that that uh, oh yeah so Craig sent me a message saying that he was not able to attend the call today uh, but he will be back next month and present what he has to present on Lloyd England and uh, my second comment was in the in the regular war room on Sundays we try desperately to stay away from technical evidence yes. and discussions this is the place to bring it to Yes. So um, this is where we want to have ideas on specifics and facts and bounce them and counterbalance them off other people and, and address those things, um, not have ideas that are not relevant to that. So. Well said. Thank you. Jerry. Yeah, I guess my camera just winked out, but I'm still here. <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, it's great to see uh, all this new stuff coming out. I'm looking forward to learning more details about uh, uh, what it, what Adam's doing and and what's coming out uh, from the uh, from the government recently. Uh, it's, uh, great to see all this interest in in the topic, and I really appreciate Lorraine inviting me. And it's uh, nice to be here. So thank, thank you. And, and Jerry, send us your email address so that we can include you directly in the invitation next time. We'll if do. you could type it in the chat or um, yeah, just type it in the chat. Figure if out how to do that. <laughs> Thank you again for being here, Jerry. He's in Oregon. Right on. Uh, Xander, you're up. Yo. All right. So um, in the chat, I put a link to a Rumble account, which I made, um, which has all of the pilots for 9-11 Truth movies on it. Um, Rob was big into not doing this, um, at some point, you know, maybe somebody could raise a fuss, but for now it's, I want to respect the work that he did, um, and, uh, get his material out there because what they did was freaking incredible. And so those are all of the, uh, the videos that he did. Feel free to watch them, subscribe to the channel. If I get 20 subscribers, I get to have a custom URL. Woohoo! <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you can watch them all, and uh, hopefully that'll be a good resource for us. You posted that uh, link in the chat? Yep, it's in the chat. So it's called um, Modern American History. I had envisioned trying to take a lot of the material that YouTube purged and getting it, um, you know, uploaded to Rumble, and, and hopefully, you know, it'll, it'll stand the test of time there. We'll see. 
Um, but yeah, there it is. Here's the episode. That's hilarious. Yeah, oh, great oh, there he yeah. is. There's, there's the bat. There he is. Woo. That's Rob. <laughs> yeah, an abrasive guy, but not a bad guy. You know. Um, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. The last thing, you know, uh, Richard um, Gage, you know, really gets a lot of folks coming at him from all sides because he was, you know, the face of all this for so long. Um, and uh, I'm interested in, uh, you know, at some point sharing some of these findings again with him. Um, you know, and I don't know. Just want us all on the right side of history, you know. Well, he should more. have you on his podcast, I think. Definitely. Yeah, I think. Maybe at some point I might, once I get the presentation really dialed in, I may go polished up. Yeah. You're definitely, would be, that would be great. Yeah. And I think you could fill up the hour and 30 minutes and then they're going to have a lot of questions for a half an hour. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. So maybe at some point. All right, folks. Thanks. I'm glad I was here. Thanks, Xander. Miles. Sorry. The, yeah, well, first of all, thanks for your patience. Uh, I hope what I shared was meaningful and encouraging. Uh, I posted, I, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm not a user of it, but I've seen people use Trello board to organize a mm -hmm. lot of information where you want to sort it out and present it to people. Um, the other thing I'll say is uh, I, I'm not an expert on this topic, uh, but I, I just signed up for Xander's Rumble Station because I'm fascinated with aircraft uh, accidents and performance. My brother died in a small plane accident, so maybe that's why. But I'm 18 miles or 30 kilometers south of the International Airport in Calgary, and I know the planes turn over my head to line up for the ILS to land to get to the touchdown point on the runway, 18 miles north. So yeah, how is it that this plane can possibly make this diving spiraling turn and not smack right into the earth long before the Pentagon, you know? Like, how is that possible for a 757? So I'll tune in to watch those videos. And I guess um, that's pretty much all I could contribute, but just encourage everybody for what you're doing. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you, Miles. Susan in Boston or Massachusetts. We're sure. We're, we're Buster. Worcester. <laughs> yeah, I just came to listen. Um, I've been shying away from all Pentagon issues because I hate the uh, discord. Um, but uh, I was encouraged to try this again. And I'm glad I did. So thank Thanks. you all. Right on. Thanks, Susan. Appreciate that. Morgan? Um. Yeah, I, I ain't got not much more, more to say than that I really thank everyone here. I thank the, the, the people, Gene and Sandra, that have been putting this on. This is the coolest group in 9-11 Truth uh, right now. And uh, just a little extra, uh, we someone, I can't for, remember who, was talking about maybe putting a debate together, getting people all in the same room. And, and I uh, personally, I don't like debates because I don't think that the, the, the communication standard offers something that brings people to knowing more. It's usually a sort of back and forth sort of, yes, it is, no, it isn't. But that, that said, whatever you guys do, I, I would say that would it, would it hurt to ask each, each, uh, each party out there with, with uh, hy hypothesis on, on the Pentagon to put all of their everything they have to say into a paper or a set of papers and to ask them if they might put that set of papers in the same place as other people are putting their papers. Um, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to I will think on that one. Right now, the roundtable discussion is the best way for them to interact with each other. We're going to do a lot of is a uh, Adam Ruff said on Richard Gage 9-11 Pentacon series, um, there has to be a lot of conversation back and forth right now. There's a lot of things that need flushed out. I mean, for 20 years, I think a lot of crust about the Pentagon has been formed around our opinions. And uh, these conversations are kind of like, <laughs> I don't know what kind of analogy I'm making here, busting all that crust up and we're starting to talk about things. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, uh, Mark first, and then Lorraine. 
Um, I think it was, uh, who was a Miles was just talking about the, how can the plane do the, the, the corkscrew turn? I think that that's, it's, that's something that people have asked the question about since, I don't know, since 2006, the, that part of the maneuver, again, I put the map in there. You can see that part of the maneuver isn't the, isn't the part that is the hard part. He dropped as low as 286 knots in that turn. And it's a perfectly, I mean, you could even program that in without using an autopilot. It's the last minute when he straightens out that is really stretches the imagination. And the other thing I heard say was that, I'm not sure who said it, but that we're, it sounds like the peop the same people who are fighting to the death for what they think happened at the Pentagon. And it leads the impression that, I think that's an expression people use when it, when they are implying that no matter what new evidence comes up, we won't change our minds. But I think this is something Lorraine's posted a few times on Facebook is, you know, show us something that supports what you think happened. Um, I, I think I can speak for her and I definitely speak for myself that I'm not, to, I'm not to the death on the plane flying over the Pentagon. I'm following what the evidence has said. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, it's, uh, Ed calls it confirmation bias. I think that's the same thing. Uh, I think we're all guilty of that to an extent. We all, but well, we root for our own football teams, you know. Or, but uh, I, I agree with that 100. percent We, the uh, Mark uh, Crispin Miller. I don't know if anybody reads him on Substack. He's amazing, but one of he's a propaganda. He taught a class on propaganda at New York University, and they finally took it away from him because a student complained about. It. But he says the hardest propaganda to recognize is the propaganda that you agree with. <laughs> Very mm -hmm. good. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Lorraine, last but not least, or, um, yeah, I gotta come back to Sandra. I'd like to say it was uh, so pleasant today, uh, the discussion without all the heckling and uh, the rotten tomatoes being flung by the, the rude boys we had last time. And uh, thank you, Jean and Sandra for moderating this so well. Nice to see Jerry here. Really great to see him uh, contributing again. And I'll just say that um, if the plane didn't hit those poles and nobody saw it hit the pole, then a lot of the discussion about the big loop that the plane flew and is it in the gate cam footage and stuff, it's all academic because it was never there. Um, whatever plane did that big loop um, wasn't the one that went near the Pentagon because so many people saw it crossing over the Potomac. There was a big loop around the Pentagon. There was um, a lot of evidence of that at the time. And uh, that's another thing I'd like to discuss more on the Facebook forum. Yes, uh, I would like to give you more time next time if you could make it back. I uh, would love to hear something. Uh, and a question, do, when guys talk to the ladies in Australia, do they say g'day mate too? Or is that, what do you, what are they? <laughs> I guess so. Um, <laughs> Not really. The <laughs> rain's never said. She's never said good day to me. So and she's, <laughs> she's she's Tasmania. So oh, that's right. No, I must say that when I was in America, I just was dumbfounded by the politeness of guys over there. We don't get that here. <laughs> no formality, and I couldn't get over being called ma'am everywhere I went and having doors open. <laughs> All right. On that note, thank you all for being here this uh, month. Um, everyone have a great rest of your weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.